the beginning, there was the greater well. One or many. Corporeal or not. None of its physical traits were known. But one thing was certain. This omnipresent entity, the outer god, definitely did, in fact, exist. And this greater well found a vast continent beyond the mists, called the Lands Between. Ancient dragons used to roll over this continent, and Dragonlord Placidusax was worshipped as a god, and under its reign, many life forms were born to live and die in this land. The greater well grew fond of the lands between, and by commanding its servants called the Fingers, the will chose a new god to replace the dragons, the dusk eyed queen. Wielding a great sword, she harnessed the black flame, a power that could kill gods. And she led her apostles to kill the god that was the consort of her placid sex. But the dusk eyed queen was not willing to serve the greater well and let it manifest this order of immortality in the lands. Instead, she served destined death. To the queen and her followers, death was natural, a part of a natural cycle. So the greater will's idea of no death was like blasphemy. The will was aware of her thoughts and sought a replacement, and found a new man, a denizen from another world, named Merica. As a vassal for its will, the greater will chose Merica and sent an incarnation of its definition of order, the Elden Beast to lands between. And so, Merica embraced the beast, then raised the Golden Army to wage a war against the Dusk Eyed Queen. Eternal life and true death. Under belief in different concepts, the two factions fought. Here, Malekith, the Black Blade, Merica's half-brother, single-handedly destroyed the queen's faction, and thus the Dusk Eyed Queen's reign was short-lived. The destined death after the war was imbued in Malekith's blade, and Merica made a new order in this land without death. That was the Golden Order, the Elden Ring. The ring was forged as a materialization of the order, and it was protected within the gargantuan earth tree to be worshipped as a new religion in the lands. With the golden grace of the earth tree, things were born, things lived, then things went back to the earth tree instead of dying, and there things were reborn. Thus was the beginning of the age of the earth tree. The lands between had an unbreakable tradition. A lord and a god. The two beings needed to be connected as consort to rule the lands. A god needed a lord, and a lord needed a god. So for Merica, her lord that would be addressed as the Elden Lord, she chose the person known as a great warrior at that time, Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. Known for taking beast ration Serash upon his back to suppress the lust for battle raging within, he was chosen as the first Elden Lord. And starting with Godwin the Golden, his eldest son, the descendants Merica and Godfrey were later addressed as the Golden Lineage. However, most living things that lived in the lands between began to oppose this new rising faction and its influence, and became hostile against the Earth Tree. But against Merica's divine powers and Godfrey's unrivaled might, both factions in the lands had no choice but to kneel before the Earth Tree. As the God Queen of the Earth Tree, Merica was worshipped by the living in the lands. Yet she suffered in great pain. The Golden Order, a solemn duty embodied within her, had become a shackle like a gnawing curse. And Merica realized that she may be a mere puppet for the greater will. 
and she began questioning if Freighter Will and the Elden Beast truly had good intentions for the lands between. Of course, the Will and its Elden Beast, they did not see this as good. Then one day, was America's own will? Or was it because the thing that consumed her, the Elden Beast cursed doing? She changed her appearance to a male's and created a being called Radagon. From the same body, America's alter ego, Radagon, led the Golden Army and marched to the battlefields with his Red Wolf to start his conquest of the region of Theernia in the West and later made himself famous as a hero. But soon, Radagon faced an unexpected challenge. The Sorcerers of the Ernia. Glintstones. These crystals, discovered ever so often in the lands, were the embers of cosmos holding vitality of stars. And people utilized the power within. The sorcery was born in the lands. The Academy of Rhea Lucaria, located in Lyurnia, was a house of knowledge where one could study all kinds of magic. And a member of the House of Caria had a destined encounter with the moon to create the lunar magic. And it charmed the Academy with her lunar magic and became its master. She was Renala, Queen of the Full Moon. Radagon met the Mystic Queen in battle and repented his territorial aggression in the Church of Faust, then married Renala to give birth to three children named Radan, Rikard, and Rani. Meanwhile, on the northeastern side, the warriors led by Lord Godfrey had been fighting an intense war against the fire giants serving the fell god God of Fire. To destroy the threat that could burn down the earth tree, the followers of Godfrey fought bravely for their earnest faith. And around the same time, Godfrey went to Stormvale Castle in the south to face the Storm Lord alone, to take the last worthy enemy and his forces down in triumph. But a shocking event took place at that moment. Right after Godfrey and his men achieved victory against Stormvale, America had taken the golden grace of Earth Tree from them. Thus, the golden hue from their eyes slowly faded away. America banished them from the lands to beyond the mists. They would be later called the Tarnished. However, this was one of America's plans for the far distant future, as she thought one day the Golden Order's reign would be shaken. So she hoped in their exile beyond those gray mists, the tarnished would reproduce as mortal. And when the time in need came, the tarnished, home from battle and death, would return and kill the Elden Beast to free her, as well as the lands between from the Golden Order. And now, with the exile of the first Elden Lord, a new Elden Lord was required. Radagon heard this news then bequeathed an amber egg to Renala and left her to return to the Earth Tree. That is how Radagon became America's second consort and the second Elden Lord. Just like the former Elden Lord, he continued the war with the Giants. And the Golden Army, at last, could wipe out the Giants. But against the one responsible for their demise, the Giants cursed Radagon. With the curse, his hair was tainted flaming red like the giant's, and Radagon was said to despise his hair. Briefly after, to put out the flame that could burn the earth tree, Merica traveled to the land of the giants, but she realized that the flame burned eternal. So she sealed the flame away in the forge of the giants, then cursed the last of the fire giants to let it tend to the flame forevermore. So the Age of Dragons, the Dusk-Eyed Queen, and the Giants have ended. Now, the lands between was about to see a new age, 
with God Queen Merica, Lord Radagon, and the godly descendants of the God Queen. Tis the dawn of the age of the demigods. Godwin, the son of America and Godfrey, was a hero that played a crucial role in the conquest. A might to defend Lando against the dragons that attacked the royal capital. As well as a conciliatory side befriending a dragon named Fortisax in the battle. These traits deemed him as a very likely successor as Lord and was called Godwin the Golden for his actions. Meanwhile, the three children of Radagon and Rinala also had the status as demigods as stepchildren of the Elden Lord. But since Radagon and Merica were essentially the same, the three also had inherited powers like the God Queen. So they were also able to prove themselves as powerful beings. Radan. He was captivated by Godfrey in his younger years and was fond of his heroic implications. So he wore armor that symbolized him and played his role as general of the land. Rodan was very big in size, but his steed was rather scrawny compared to him. Yet Rodan wanted to stay with his beloved steed. So Rodan studied gravitational magic to adjust his weight and probably because he had inherited Rinal's talents. His skills in gravitational magic were on par with his sheer might. Yet the reason why he studied the magic was not solely because of his beloved horse. Every once in a while, a malformed star born in the void beyond rained down on the lands. And these falling stars of omen was like a harbinger of destruction for the living here. So, from guidance from a race risen to life with a meteor strike, the Alabaster Lord with skin of stone, Radon studied gravity magic in more depth and managed to make a star collapse, conquering the stars to hold them in place. Radon's name became legendary and was praised by his people as Star Scourge Radon for this work. His sister, Lunar Princess Rani, resembled less of his father and took more of her mother's traits as a sorcerer. Like Renala did in the past, Rani also met a moon of her very own. But her moon was especially darker and colder, the Dark Moon. Then one day, in the deep woods, young Rani encountered a snowy old witch. She was Rani's secret mentor, who taught her many cold-based spells. Its location, now unknown, the witch was from an ancient city that was punished to damnation for high treason against the fingers and the greater well. The existence of other outer gods and the shocking truth about the two fingers the agents of the greater will was more than enough to completely change Rani's perspective. Lastly, Rikard, brother of Radan and Rani, was a praetor of Lindo. He performed his duties with justice and was adored by knights and clerics alike. Then one day, after encountering an elder serpent that could devour gods, his personality had changed drastically, and finding him became a very hard task as of the present day. Winding back in time to when the war with giants ended, Merica bore a twin with her consort Radagon, and their names are Mikola and millennia. Since they were essentially children of a single god, the two siblings had the most potential among the demigods. Mikola had the powers to make life abundant, 
and millennia had the powers of scarlet rot that could putrefy anything. However, possibly because they were born from one single god, the twins were born with a terrible curse. Mikola was born with the body of a perpetually young child, and millennia was not able to control the rot that festered from within, and her body continually rotted. Putrefication would be natural since it makes the cycle of life revolve. But it wouldn't be a curse if it just stayed natural. It agonized her, and she had to sever her arm and replace it with a prosthetic. Mikola sought to undo his sister's curse and looked for ways to rid up the scarlet rot by studying the golden rule. But he couldn't find an answer. He still did what he could and created the unalloyed gold needle. So then Melania may be able to suppress the festering rot. In return, Melania trained so that she would be able to protect her brother with her skill of blades instead of resorting to the scarlet rot. Meanwhile, although greatly diluted, some still inherited Merica's blood regardless. A scion of the Golden Lineage, Godric is a prime example. As one of the Golden Lineage, he could serve the Elden Lord with other demigods. But since he didn't directly inherit godly powers, he was significantly weaker than others. So, to compensate for that gap of power, he performed a grotesque act. The act of grafting. The process of attaching body parts of others continued on and on with Godric's lust for power. He claimed the empty Stormvale castle as his own, then went on with grafting, augmenting himself with others' bodies. Thus, with the emergence of various demigods, the lands between was ruled by the God Queen. And among many demigods, only Rani, Mikala, and Melania were chosen by the Two Fingers as a potential successor to Merica. And for those ones closer to Godwit than demigods, people called them the Imperians. <laughs> <laughs>